He's, uh, remember when I had him, when I was training him in crisis intervention, all of a sudden he breaks off in this big, big, long spiel about being some lifeboat for some one in a storm and trying to get him back to shore. I'm like, man, that was just awesome. What I didn't realize, yeah, was it a master's degree in that stuff? Yeah, I have a master's degree in counseling. Yeah, he's got a master's degree in counseling. He didn't tell anybody this, and yeah, he was a rock star. Just totally took me by surprise. I'm like, man, this guy is caught on quick. He's so good. <laughs> yeah, it had nothing to do with my training. <laughs> so, I'm going to turn it over to you, Port. Perfect. At about nine ish, they'll start doing some announcements. So, just okay. give you some heads up. Gotcha. Sounds good. Yeah. Perfect. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, Should be a little more lively. <laughs> so, like uh, Carper said, uh, I work at the Burlington Police Department. I have for the last five years. Um, I started going to the academy in August of 2018. I graduated in December. Um, we did a field training program. I'm sure the other officers kind of talked about what that is. I did that for about six ish months, and I've been on my own ever since. And you had the best FTO in the world? I have, but se several of them. Uh, currently, I serve uh, as the canine handler. My dog's name is Chase. Uh, he's a 100 pound German Shepherd. Uh, he's black with tan paws. I just picked him up from the uh, vet this morning because I was in Pittsburgh for a wedding, so he's a little riled up. But I brought him out, he should be okay. And at the end of the class, I'll bring him out and kind of show you what he does. So. Uh, just jumping right into it, why I got into this career. Uh, well, I am from Chicago. I was born in a little village. Um, dealt with law enforcement a lot. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, I always watched movies like Rush Hour or Bad Boys, uh, things like that. I watched SVU like on TV, so it was something that always interested me and something I always wanted to do. So when I uh, got in high school, uh, I wrestled, I had a wrestling coach and I had a lacrosse coach who uh, essentially asked me one day my senior year, it was like September or December, September or November, and he asked me, hey, what do you want to do with your life? And I was like, I don't know, dude, I'm, I know I'm going to graduate, but I haven't really thought of it. And he's like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know, I, I think I kind of want to be a cop. And he pointed me to Western Illinois University, we applied the same day. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to play lacrosse at Western Illinois University. Uh, I majored in law enforcement and justice administration with a minor in fire science and Spanish. Uh, Spanish is my first language. Um, from that, I um, graduated in 2016, did an internship with the DuPage County Sheriff's Office in Illinois, and I loved it. I mean, I got to see everything from how their tech team operated to their dispatch center to they have an in house crime laboratory lab, which is really cool. Uh, I got to go and work cases with detectives, and the most important thing I did um, was I actually rode around with their canine unit for about two weeks. They have 12 canines, uh, four German Shepherds, four um, Bloodhounds, uh, and then four Belgian Malinois. And from then on, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to have a dog at work. I want this to be my thing. Um, I was fortunate enough to continue my education and go to Eastern Illinois for graduate school. I a master in counseling just because I knew that this job uh, entitled encompass speaking with a lot of people and getting on their level, so that's something I did. Um, and after that, I met my wife in grad school, we moved to Iowa, tested at Burlington, and the rest is history. Uh, I've been here ever since. I enjoy it, I enjoy the work I do, and uh, I really enjoy working with my partner Chase every day. We do something every single day. There's no days that go off. Somebody asked me, um, are you working today? And I always say, if the car's in the, if the dog's in the car, I'm on the clock. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, the second question here is, what was the hiring process like? So for me, I actually got to go through uh, what's called a regional testing. I don't know if any of the other officers talked about it. Um, typically, for the police departments, you do one test, one physical, and you get to apply to one job. But for me, uh, I got to do one test, one physical, and I got to apply to about 11 or 12 jobs, which was super nice. Um, so it was me and about 100 other people at SCC. We um, all took the physical together, a bunch of people failed it. We all took the written t together, even more people failed that. Uh, and then there was about 11 of us who were left. So I remember in that same meeting, they were like, hey, as long as all of you um, 
can pass a background, you've pretty much got a job. So it was pretty nice. Um, applied at the Burlington Police Department, interviewed, uh, and was fortunate enough to get a call back. From there, did the other officers kind of talk about what the hiring process looks like? So from there, you get what's called a conditional offer. That pretty much means, hey, um, we want to hire you, but we, we need to make sure you can pass a background test, uh, a polygraph or a lie detector test, um, and you need to have uh, a physical done. So I did all that, passed it, and uh, after that's done, you go to the academy like I talked about for about six months and three months, um, and then you come back, they toss the keys to a squat car and say, hey, it's time to go. So that's kind of what it looked like for me. Um, some of the jobs I held at the agency. So like uh, Carper said, I, I've been very fortunate in my career to kind of bounce around to a lot of divisions. When I first started off, I was just on patrol. Uh, that just means that I worked um, one of the shifts, either 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, and within that, I do different things like respond for uh, calls for service, meaning, hey, um, a common one is like, hey, my neighbor's dog won't stop barking and somebody needs to do something about it. So I go, talk to the neighbor, or hey, my garage was burglarized, or my vehicle was burglarized, and things like that. Um, additionally, that includes doing things such as making traffic stops on cars that are speeding, um, cars that are driving recklessly, calls that, cars that uh, are suspected of driving intoxicated. Um, additionally, there's the things like, um, you know, there's a fight at the casino or people are fighting in the street, this, that, or the other. And that's kind of the, the basic responsibilities of what a patrol officer would do. Um, from that, I was fortunate enough to be selected to be a detective. So I was a general crime detective for about 18 months. Uh, in that, I worked everything from homicides to suspected elder abuse to kidnappings, uh, different things like that. And that was really kind of a big change from patrol. Uh, I always say that on patrol you really just need to do what you need to do, get it done, and send your report off versus being a detective. You really take things at a snail pace and you know I, it was one report a day. Um, you really take your time. You look at everything. You look at pe what people might have done, what people could have done, what people could not have done, and you take all that into account and essentially work your case. Um, from there, um, I remember uh, always being interested in the canine unit. Ever since I got hired, I was always uh, talking to the canine handlers and telling them, hey, if you need me to take bites or if you need me to uh, lay out a track, uh, we'll talk about what that stuff is later. Uh, I'm all for it. I've always been pretty hands-on with the program. And when I was a detective, they were like, hey, we're actually getting a second um, a dog and we're going to add it to the canine unit. And I was like, man, I, I got to put my name in. Most people are like, you're really going to take... You're really going to give up being a detective to go back to patrol and handle a dog? And I said, without hesitation, absolutely. So I, I interviewed. I was fortunate enough to be selected. Uh, and I've been back on patrol with Chase ever since July. So uh, some of the duties that we have, first and foremost, Chase is uh, a detection tool. So what that means is um, he is certified to detect uh, marijuana, heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, um, MDMA, psilocybin, mushrooms, um, and all of their derivatives. So um, if there's marijuana in a car, if somebody's been around marijuana, if somebody was hanging out with a person who smokes methamphetamine and they smoked it in their presence, it would be on their clothes. Chase can detect that, he alerts it to me, uh, and then we essentially either search their domicile, their home, or their vehicles. Uh, Chase is also certified in tracking, so what that means is um, a perfect example of this is we try to stop a car, it doesn't want to stop, we chase it around town for a little bit, the driver decides, you know, it's a good idea, I'm going to crash this car and then run away. Uh, I can pull Chase out of my car, we go right up to the car window, um, I give Chase the tracking command and he can actually track me to that person. We've done it twice now and he, he's, it's one of the things he's really good at. Um, the way he does that is he keeps his nose down to the ground and he's actually... Uh, able to smell the disturbances in the ground coupled with the introduction of a new odor of that person. So uh, whether that be them sweating in the car, them defecating or going to the bathroom on themselves, or even just the smells that are seeped into their shoes when they're running, Chase can lead us to those people. Uh, the last thing and the one thing Chase really loves to do uh, is he's an apprehension dog. So that means he's a bike dog. So that means I give Chase a command 
he goes and bites on somebody and he doesn't let go until I tell him to let go. Uh, so we would use that, um, for example, if somebody uh, tries to run from us who needs to go to jail, somebody who's actively fighting officers, or uh, somebody who's trying to hurt me. Uh, there's a button on my vest I can press, it shoots his door open, Chase comes and he knows uh, it's time to go to work. So uh, Chase is a three year, nine month, 100 pound German Shepherd. He's a big dog. Um, he lives with me. He has two houses, an outdoor one and an indoor one. In the winter, he's in his indoor one in my garage. It's a heated uh, dog run. In the summertime, he has an outside one that he has access to. Uh, a little dog house and then about a six by eight uh, little thing where he can hang out and go to the bathroom. Chase never comes in my house. That's a question I get all the time. Uh, and the reason he doesn't come in my house is because Chase is, is, he's too aggressive. Chase is a dog, but he isn't a pet. And what I mean by that is he, uh, he doesn't know how to relax. That's not really in his, his repertoire. That isn't something he just does. Chase just knows work and he knows if I work, I get rewarded. And when I get rewarded, I get pets, which is what I enjoy. Um, I have a pet dog at home, Sam. She's a three-year-old beagle boxer mix, and she's, she's the epitome of a pet. Uh, my son rides her around like a horse. He can pull on her tail, he can pull on her ears, um, and she's never growled, sniffed, or bit at him. My son, when he first met Chase, Chase saw him from across the uh, yard, and he immediately went into a, who is this guy, why is he with my handler, and started freaking out my son. So that's why he will never meet Chase. Uh, that's why my wife never meets Chase. That's why Chase never comes into my house. Um, there's a big relationship that comes between the handler and the canine. Um, and that is that of a working kind of symbiotic relationship. Every day with Chase is new for me. Some days we have good days, some days we have bad days. Uh, and it's my job as a handler to interpret that uh, and let the guys know that I'm working with um, for example, if I go into work and I tell the guys, hey, uh, Chase is having a bad day, I'd probably stay away from my car. That means if they even come near my car, he's at the window barking, barking, barking. Um, and it's important uh, to recognize that because Chase is also taken in the houses if we get called for like a burglary call, Chase and I go in with another officer. So it's important for me to be able to express that too my coworkers of like, hey, you really give us space today, because if it goes down, it goes down. Um, I kind of ran on a tangent about Chase, but we'll, we'll, that's gonna be the theme today. How has it affected uh, my life or my family life? Uh, that's a great question, and for me, in my current position, uh, it's my every day. I, we get, I get no off days with Chase. Um, my wife says I spend more time with Chase than I do my son, uh, and some days I believe her, because the first thing I do when I wake up is I start heating up a bottle for my son because he's still usually asleep. And then I'll throw my slippers on, run out to the garage, let Chase out, make sure he's okay. Uh, I check his feet, his stomach, his sides. I check his teeth um, because uh, Chase is worth $20,000 and that's what the city paid for him. Uh, so it's important to document everything because um, if, for example, I go to work one day and he's missing a front right tooth, somebody's going to be like, you didn't notice this, what's going on? And then we got to get the tooth capped by silver and it's, it's super expensive. So that's, that's literally how I start every single day. I put him back up, I put food down, I go back in and then I, uh, I, I tend to my son. But uh, after that, I uh, drop my son off at daycare, I go back, I pick Chase up and then we go out to training. Uh, we train either in uh, tracking, narcotics detection, or bite work every day. It's usually about an hour a day in the morning, an hour a day in the evening. Um, and the whole time I'm just working with him to make sure his alerts are good, his obedience is good. Uh, he understands that um, I'm the handler, he needs to be listening to me, I'm the one who's rewarding him, um, and we do things like that. Uh, aside from that, just being a police officer in general has had a huge impact on my life. Um, you know, there are certain things or certain uh, ways, even down to the way I walk, I always walk on the right side of my family. Can anyone guess why? Hmm? Why? Kind of, any other guesses? It's because I'm right-handed and I always have a gun on me. Um, I always look for doors when I walk into stores. I always, um, 
I'm always noticing traffic, driving this and that. I'm always reading license plates out to my wife. Um, being a police officer and being in this line of work, this, it, it changes you in the way that you become very hyper vigilant. Um, just because that's kind of the way it works at work, you know what I mean? People say certain things. Uh, a prime example, when I stop a car, I always ask somebody, you know, life's finished, blah, 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 blah. We're standing there talking or whatever, and I'm like, hey, is there anything illegal in the car? And if I ask, if you ask me that, my answer is always no. But if I ask somebody and they tell me, well, I don't know. Okay, that's kind of a weird response. Uh, so it's catching little things like that that really, um, uh, that you learn within this job and you learn the way people talk and it's just kind of, I'll tell my wife all the time, like, oh, this person's lying about this, this, and this, and this is why. And she's like, well, you're just being me. And I'm like, nah, I'm pretty sure they're lying. Um, and even, even in the way that I interact with my son, um, just some of the things that he exposed, he's exposed to, um, I, I look at it now from a work view perspective and a prime example is, about three months ago, I bought him these Nerf guns and we were having fun and we were running around the house and obviously due to some recent events, I, I took all the Nerf guns out of the house. And it's just, it's something that you live with daily. So that's how it's impacted my family life. Um, I have two sisters who also work in pseudo law enforcement. They are correctional officers and, and we trade stories all the time. I'm from a family of four. Have a seat, you're just sitting down. I'm from a family of four. My youngest brother, he's a banker. Um, but the, the three of us, me and my two sisters, we always trade stories from the holidays and Thanksgiving and stuff. So it's, it's something that uh, has honestly kind of taken over my life and uh, it's something I do daily. I do a lot of outside of work stuff for Chase. Uh, we do snips of obviously high schools. Uh, any business that requests it, any re rehabilitation center that requests it, they can call down and ask, hey, can you run the dog through um, X, Y, and Z? And we, we go and respond. So that's kind of a lot of things. Um, that kind of answers all the questions on here. Um, does anybody have any questions about Chase before I kind of start covering any of this equipment we have here? What he likes, what he doesn't like? Nothing? Well, if you have any questions about Chase, well, it pops up. Shoot your hand up. Um, and I'll do my best to get to it. So one of the most important things for me and any handler is always a leash. Uh, so I have a eight foot leash here. Um, handlers have different ones. There's some polyurethane ones. There's some short ones. Uh, there's metal ones. Uh, I prefer uh, this double coated one, number one, because it's big and Chase is really big. So it, he, he's really strong. Um, it gives him a lot of space to work independently. Uh, while also allowing me to have two different points of contact. Um, it has this little nice thing that I can do that, slide it like there, then put it over if I wished. Um, on the end, there's what's called a frog clip, and it's nice for me because all I do is push the two sides, throw it into his collar, uh, and we're good to go. Uh, it's super nice, super easy, and especially for me because I work at night, um, it's nice to see that simplicity chase wears um he'll always wear a tan collar because he's black uh, again i work at night and if i need to grab his collar real quick it's just easy for me to see i mean he's his skin is or his fur is super black and at night i'm like okay this is next to next to impossible so i'll throw always, i always throw a tan collar on him you'll notice that all of chase's collars say police on them it doesn't say his name uh, it's because he's he's not a pet he's a police officer he's owned by the city of burlington i just handle him uh, every day. Uh, all of his collars have a handle on them so that it allows me to grab him, really put him in any position I want, pick him up if I need to, uh, things like that. This is actually Chase's badge on here. This is the one he got from the city of Burlington and showing he's a police officer. Um, you can pass those around. He's never worn this collar, so it's clean. Don't worry about it. Uh, Chase also has a muzzle. He really doesn't like leather ones. This is a leather one that he broke and chewed through. Um, so I learned that he likes the metal ones. Every dog has different quirks. Um, his is that he just doesn't like full mouth muzzles. So uh, he wears this when we go to the vet because he is super aggressive. Um, he wears this when he plays with 
uh, my pet dog, Sam, because he will essentially pin her down. So anytime they hang out together or just run off energy, I throw this on him. He's super cool with it. Um, if we were to, not that we do this, but if we were to walk into like the holiday parade or if we were to be in public, this goes on because I don't need him uh, freaking out at anybody. So we can pass that around too. I talked a little bit about um, Chase's detection capabilities. This is how we train on a certain odors. So uh, the DEA or the Drug Enforcement Agency um, gives all handlers the opportunity to apply and say, hey, I'm a canine handler. I train with drugs every day. Uh, can we get some? And they're actually like, yep, here you go, 100% certified. This is what it is without hesitation. So. Um, while we do train on large odors, uh, for example, like a large odor, an ounce of marijuana or an ounce of cocaine or an ounce of methamphetamine, what we actually do is we take these little strips, they're just t-shirt strips or cotton strips, and we'll pack it into the mason jar in which the, um, the drug is in. Uh, that lays the latent trace odor of the drug on these little strips. Then I take these strips, put it into a key holder. It's just a regular key holder. This one says meth on it because these are uh, trace order of methamphetamine. I put these into here and then I put this, I could throw it into uh, the yard over there, give Chase the search command and he'll take me right to it. Typically what I do is I hide it on cars, um, the seams of doors, the trunk, um, the wheel wells, things like that. And then I'll start Chase, give him the command and uh, when he finds it, he gets his reward. Chase always gets rewarded with the same uh, reward, he never gets treats. He never eats anything but his, um, his kibble. Uh, he gets kibble twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. Um, but when it comes to positive reinforcement and him knowing, hey buddy, nice job, uh, it's always his tug ball. He chose the pink ones, I have no idea why. Um, this is his long string one, this is his cleanish ish one. Um, but you'll see me when we come in here and do a little bit of obedience work. Uh, this is literally, Chase will jump through that window for this ball if I throw it at that window. This is, this is what he loves, this is all he knows. This is one of his big things. This little pouch here, uh, this is the pouch that came when I was at my canine training school. It just goes on my belt when we go there, the ball goes in here. He can't see it, we're doing our thing. If he gives me his alert, uh, which is just passive, he'll just sit there, square his body up to it and put his nose on where he thinks the odor is or where he's as closest to the odor as he can be. He'll wait, I throw it through his ears, he gets it. Big pets, good boy, good boy, good boy. I whistle a lot, I play tug with him a little bit. Um, I let him carry it back to the car, I put him in his crate, I give the out command, he outs it, I put it back in, and that's it. That's typically how a lot of our interactions go. I can pass this around, it's, it's clean, don't worry about it. It won't be a little bit, but um, that covers that. that. Here is Chase's vest. It's not a bulletproof vest. It's more of a, uh, just a tracking vest. And the reason why it's more of just a tracking vest is because this gives me a different point of contact for my leash and Chase. Uh, Chase takes his commands in uh, Dutch. So you'll hear me say certain things. Um, that for him means certain things, but a lot of our communication actually comes through my leash. So a tight leash means, um, hey, keep working. A loose leash means get to work. Um, and he can really feel it on his collar and kind of knows, okay, here's kind of what he wants me to do. But when I put it on, for example, here, this goes all the way to his back. Uh, he feels less, next to no pressure and he knows, okay, it's in time for me to have my nose down and really figure out where I'm going. Uh, it says police on both sides, it's reflective. Um, again, it's not bulletproof, it's not stab proof, it's not anything proof. Uh, it's just for that point of contact. Some canine officers and handlers have their dogs wear bulletproof vests. Um, it really just depends on the handler. I see the benefits to both. Um, Chase doesn't wear a bulletproof vest and the reason being is because he's such a large dog um, that he heats up very fast and overheating for German Shepherds is, is a big issue. Uh, so I didn't want to add, number one, more weight on top of how much he already carries, um, but two, kind of seal him in and create more heat when I find it unnecessary. 
Uh, one of the most important things about having a bite dog or an apprehension dog is when I do send him to go bite somebody, I want him wearing as little as possible so that people can't grab him or manipulate him and it's just him uh, and that person. So uh, the way we train bites is very simple. Uh, from puppies, they get a little bite pillow and they're encouraged to bite it. It's the same similar material as this. Um, they're given the command, so they start associating kind of, okay, this is good, this is fun. Uh, then they transition to a sleeve like this. It's a wedge sleeve, it's very tough. Um, if you're wearing this as a decoy, is what the person getting bit is called. You feel nothing, there's a big tube in here. Um, and you start essentially guiding the dog in for the bite, giving it to them, giving them responses, letting them know it's good. You'll see the handler kind of pets the back of the dog's head, lets them know that they're doing good. And then once the dog is done transitioning from this, they transition into a full on bite suit, which is just polyurethane sleeves. And it kind of looks like a big car heart. Uh, and then handlers just wear that. So I take bites from the Fort Madison dog, the Wyza County dog, our other dog, Rico, the West Burlington dog. Um, and it's important as a handler to take bites because you want to be able to know how different dogs react in different situations and what they might like or might not like. So I kind of covered all of the gear I have aside from his shock collar, which we just introduced the other day. Um, different from my other dog, uh, the shock collar that Chase wears uh, has seven different settings. I wear it on my vest. Uh, I wear it right here. The first one is just a vibe tone, so I press it and it says, hey, stop. Uh, and then I crank it up to a seven, which debilitates him, locks him up, and I, I pull him off. Chase likes to ride at around a two, uh, the low two. That lets him know, okay, I'm kind of not supposed to be doing what I'm doing. Uh, I should probably stop. Um, comparatively speaking to my home dog, who also wears a shot collar, uh, this is used as minimal as possible with Chase. Uh, my home dog, uh, she jumps on people, she bites, she gets a full ride every time. Um, and the reason that this isn't used in that manner uh, is because of keeping that positive relationship with Chase, right? A lot of the stuff we do is positive-based reinforcement. I don't want him to think, oh, I'm going to mess up. He's going to buzz me. I'm going to be mad at him. It creates animus anus it creates animosity, uh, and then it uh, essentially starts leading to like, okay, I don't want to listen to this guy. He's kind of a jerk. He's just going to shock me, so... Any questions about any of this, or Chase, or anything else? Any no questions, a bad question. Anything? Nothing. He was asking about pets the dog. I tried to explain to him why. That's a great question. So Chase can't be a pet. Uh, he's too aggressive. I, I really mean it. Um, when I bring him in here, I'll actually have the first row step back um, and we'll kind of put chairs in the middle. Um, he is by nature or by design uh, not supposed to be friendly. I mean, he's not even friendly to the people I work with and we've been there about five months. Um, it's important to recognize that and especially for me because uh, if he bites somebody accidentally, that, that's, that's my fault, right? Because I'm the handler, I'm the one supposed to interpret it. So it's important for uh, me to always tell people, and I'm, I'm very clear, hey, not friendly, will bite, um, because he will. And, and it, uh, it's, he will do some serious heavy, I mean, we were breaking, we were breaking uh, bite sleeves up at training, just because he's so big. So that's a, that's a great question. Um, go ahead. That's another great question. So uh, the, Chase is actually my second canine. My first canine was canine Paco. Uh, he was also a German Shepherd, and I got to name Paco. Um, we had him from when he was about a year and six months to about two months training with the other handler, Beckman, which I'm not sure if he... Okay, so the other handler, canine Beck, handler Beckman, uh, is the trainer for our region. So we actually got my first canine, Paco, when he was really young. We trained him up. He was like, what do you want to name him? And I was like, I don't know. I kind of like Paco, so I named him Paco. But Chase has a very different story because uh, I'm not sure if you guys heard, canine Paco actually passed away super unexpectedly. Uh, he had uh, some heart issues that we believe played into it ultimately. Um, but long story short, two weeks before I'm supposed to go to canine training with Paco, who I've already been working with for months and established a great relationship with, um, he just passed and they're like, hey, 
you can either, they have a dog coming in from uh, the Netherlands or you can wait until December. And uh, I'm the kind of person that if I fall, I just, I'll get right back up on the horse. So I was like, let's, let's make it happen. I'll go pick him up. So I actually first met Chase uh, the Friday of our training. I went up to Chicago and I picked him up from O'Hare. And this is a great story. I love telling this story. So I picked him up at uh, what's called a freight distribution center at the airport. So like if you ship things from Europe or something, it doesn't go on a regular plane, it goes on a big cargo plane. Um, and I had all of his paperwork and the trainer who uh, told me how to pick him up was like, go to this, go to this door, show this paperwork and then they'll, they'll wave you into the warehouse. So I did that and the lady's like, okay, turn around and it's in that big warehouse over there with all the other animals. And I'm like, animals? And it's this big warehouse with giant, uh, bay doors and there was like exotic animals in there and a the whole thing but I open this door and I just hear this dog freaking out deep barks just freaking out and I go oh, that's not my dog so I walk over to this pallet of about 60 dogs everything from super expensive poodles into like these super nice crates to uh, the working dogs the giant schnauzers the males and I show my paperwork to the guy and he was like are you just by yourself and I go, yeah, why? And he goes, oh, dude, yours is the one freaking out. And I was like, oh, no. So I walk over and I meet Chase for the first time, and he wanted nothing to do with me. I mean, he was waiting for somebody to open the door so he could bite somebody. So after about an hour and a half on the side of this building, while well, he's still in the kennel, uh, trying to get him to calm down, um, he's still barking at me through the thing, just scratching at it, wanting to get out. Um, another handler from another company comes over and he goes, hey, is that your dog? And I go, I think it's supposed to be. And he goes, do not let that dog out. That dog will bite you. So we ended up putting him in his kennel in the back of his quad car and I drove to my training was in Ohio. I drove to Ohio that same day and um, I, called up, I called the guy who runs the company we go through and I was like, hey, I don't know, dude, this, this dog's freaking out. He's gonna bite me, I'm not letting him out. And he goes, oh no, just let him out, it's fine. I was like, let him out. It's fine. It's me and this dog in the hotel room. You're not even here. <laughs> so finally, uh, we figured out a way to just, once I was going to let him out, I had this whole plan. I, I had his ball. I had a leash. I was going to ball him real quick and leash him up, and we were going to go. Um, and as soon as I, I opened the thing, he blew right past the ball, turned, and I'll, ne I'll never forget, turned, squared at me, and kind of perched, and I was like, ah, oh, here it comes. And for whatever reason, I just threw the ball as hard as I could at him, and he did that distracted him long enough for me to put the leash on him. He grabbed the ball, we went outside, and we've been best friends ever since. Uh, I hand-fed Chase from my hand for about the first two months we knew each other. Um, and the one time he growled at me, um, I essentially just stopped what we were doing, put him up, and, and we called it, and he hasn't growled at me ever since. So. Uh, now he does really good. We, we have our routines. We have our patterns. Um, but uh, he's still um, he's still a working dog. He's still an apprehension dog. So I, as much as I, I, I love to say that he's grown, he's doing really good, he's really obedient, uh, I still don't trust him. And I don't think I ever will. And I think that's important to know. So good question. No, nope, can't pet him. Super mean. We'll bite. Anything else? Anything. Like my, like is your son not able to go play in the backyard? He's out there. It, so when he is um, at home, he's so he, his kennel has like four locks. There's the basic lock that comes with it. I put a lock on that. Then I put another lock around the whole thing. Um, so he is, but like when we do training out back, I I have a little sign on my back door that says "Do not come outside." And I'll put that on, and that lets my wife out. No, number one, do not come outside. Number two, do not let her pet dog outside. Um, because Chase isn't fixed and she isn't fixed and that's the last thing I need on my mind right now. Um, and yeah, I actually have a privacy fence too because if he sees anybody else, like it's a whole thing. I was doing some training outside of my, on my front yard once, just some simple obedience stuff. And um, I'm looking at Chase and I'm giving him a command and I can see he's not looking at me and I'm like, what is going on? And I look over and this wiener dog from down the street is like full marching at us. So I pick Chase up and throw him over my fence just so that he doesn't eat this wiener dog in one bite. So, Can Chase clear your fence? With no hesitation, yes. First place. He can put both 
hands and elbows on my shoulder and still have them, still be taller than me. He's a big dog. You'll see. He's a big dog. He's a big boy. Yeah. So, anything else? Perfect. Well, I'll run and grab him. I'm gonna let him out first. And perfect. I'll move him back. Everybody, if you want to move back real quick, I appreciate it. <coughs> Just the front row, please. Yes, 
down command. You see how he's down on all fours? Off. Look at the bad man. 